Hi guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. So for today's video, I have never been so excited for a video. I am a part of a really major Pat McGrath collab today. So here is what you are in for. Me and six other lovely creators, we have decided to do a full face get ready of Pat McGrath, each using a different palette so you get to see seven different looks today. And then we are also going to be talking about in our get ready the products that we do think are worth it and the products that we don't think are worth it. You have a lot of Pat McGrath content today and I know you guys are going to love it because if you're subscribed to me, you know how obsessed I am with Pat McGrath and I know so many of you are as well. I have this idea where I wanted to create a full face get ready of me using just Pat McGrath and I know there are so many amazing creators here who are also just as much in love with Pat McGrath as I am so I contacted one person and then we contacted another and I was like you know what anybody who's Pat McGrath should be a part of this collab and then I gotta give it to my girl Kelsey Kelsey Brianna J she definitely took the reins on this one and she was like here's what we're gonna do here's how it's going to be done she took my little wimpy idea and she made it into the collab that it is today so I'm so excited to be in a collab with so many people that I love on this platform and that I respect and it's amazing. So here is what you're in for. So we are all doing a full face of Pat McGrath, loves and dislikes, but I know you guys always ask me to do looks with my Pat McGrath palettes because they are so expensive. You have seven looks today. So the first Mothership palette, the Subliminal palette, is going to be featured in Kelsey Brianna J's video. The second palette, the Sublime palette, is going to be featured in Michelle Wong's video today. I am doing the number three subversive palette. Doing bronze seduction is going to be Chelsea from Glam Girl Chelsea. Midnight Sun is going to be covered from Alicia. She is kinky sweats here on YouTube. Mel is going to be doing a look with Divine Rose. And then we have Tara Lynn who is going to be doing a look featuring the Blitz Astral Quads. So make sure you definitely check out all of their videos. They are all super talented at makeup. They have such amazing channels. So if you aren't subscribed to them already you guys need to go subscribe to them check out their videos they create amazing content as well and I think everybody here is just the perfect fit for this collab I am so excited I love all of these people and I'm so excited to spread the Pat McGrath love with you guys so if you want to see how I got this look then just keep watching start off with the eyes and generally speaking as far as Pat McGrath eyeshadows go you guys know where I stand I think she makes state-of-the-art eyeshadow palettes she has the most beautiful unique blitz astral glittery formula which is on this eye right here she has my favorite eyeshadow palettes ever in her line my favorite of hers of course are the mothership palettes the big ones I also like her little baby motherships though those ones I just don't love as much as the big ones but she does have some not so good ones which I'll talk about in a second but first we're gonna get into the look I'm gonna show you how I did this eyeshadow look I'm doing the mothership 3 subversive palette this palette really inspires me I feel very creative with this palette so I'm taking my rep for 16 brush in this matte brown shade and I just want to make sure I'm using a big fluffy blending brush so that nothing is too harsh for this first color and I'm gonna blend that all the way through my crease you guys always Always ask me for Pat McGrath tutorials so I'm so excited to get another one up with this palette because I don't think I've ever done a look on my channel with this palette maybe I have I can't remember but I'm happy to bring this palette out anyways so as you can see that blended out nice and seamless and now we're gonna just dip into the matte black because I want this to be a pretty smoky dramatic look and we're gonna pat that here and I'm gonna grab something laying around and we're gonna work on blending black I find this really helps to blend black so that you, it doesn't go out of hand or really low past your eyes to kind of droop your eyes down. You want to keep it at an upward angle especially when you're blending black because it can make you look sad. Somebody in my house is vacuuming right now. This is very inconvenient timing. You see how that color just like lifted my eye allowed me to kind of blend that black very freely and I am going to make sure I have this quarter of my eyelid covered in black because I like the look of shadow layered on top of black. The main baby that we're working on is this shade right here. I of course had to do a purple look with this palette. I definitely on my Instagram and my YouTube, I've never done a purple look using this palette. So 
I really, really had to. The shade needs to be worked on with a finger. It's a little bit sheer, meaning that you can really see the glitter particles, but you have to build it up if you really want the color that you see in the pan. And then I want those glitters to run high, so make sure with your finger, you're tapping it up high over the crease because I want a glitter explosion on my eye. This is not her favorite formula of mine, but it's still, as you can see, is a gorgeous, gorgeous color. And then we're gonna take one of my favorite shades in the palette. This is her Blitz Astral formula, which is the best. This is like a purple blue. And I love the way this layers over the two shades that I have down. And I'm just going to pop that on the outer half of my eyelid. Ugh, I just love the look of glitter throw up all over my eyes <laughs> when it comes to Pat McGrath. Because if you just literally pat random of her Blitz Astral formula on your eyelid, you just look like this editorial makeup artist. It's really, really incredible. And then I'm going to blend these edges a little bit, kind of disperse that glitter. Love how this is turning out. And then I'm going to take a pencil brush and we're gonna go into this shade right here which is basically a sheer shade with a pink duochrome to it to finish off for now these all complement each other very well you clean up underneath because there is fallout with this shade if you want to reduce fallout definitely use a glitter glue with these shades i think that original purple shade would definitely benefit from the use of a glitter glue but it doesn't need one before we move on to the face though i do want to talk about some eyeshadows that i don't like or that personally i feel aren't worth it for the most part her palettes in general are always a thumbs up for me i haven't really come across a palette that i haven't liked from her however However, I have come across some that I don't think are worth it. So this guy, I don't even know what it's called. This is the cheapest packaging from Pat McGrath ever. Sometimes she'll randomly do these collections where the packaging is so cheap. This came in like a little set with a glitter and these are the colors. And the shadows are good. The quality on these are good. They blend good, but these are the most boring colors. <laughs> it, this just wasn't worth the money. I feel like it was good if you want to try the Pat McGrath formula, but truly I feel like you aren't getting the, the the Pat McGrath formula in here with this, you're just getting some nice shimmers and some nice matte. And while these shadows do correlate with her palettes, you're missing the main beauty of the glittery shades. So for me, this just wasn't worth it. It wasn't a true representation of the brand and the packaging was not good. Also, please, please, please don't pick up her individual shadows. These are the most expensive individual shadows with the least amount of product ever. The value on these are horrible. The value in her regular big pans are so much better these are a total rip off you're getting like little to no product and the majority of the shades can be found in her original palette and just the amount of money you're spending on these individuals you might as well buy the product itself she has a few shades which are original so those i am happy to own but value wise these were a rip off and the packaging again is really really cheap she'll come out with some amazing luxurious packaging and some items which yes amazing totally worth the price totally worth the experience and then she randomly comes out with these super cheap packaging things that just aren't good so anyways i mean the quality of these of course are amazing but please don't purchase the individuals because because they are not worth it. We will come back to that palette, but we do need to work on her complexion products. She has a system which you're supposed to use and coordinate all of her products. For the most part, I really do enjoy her complexion products. So we're gonna start off with the Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Primer. This is another one of her weird items that have super cheap packaging. And personally, I am not wowed by this primer. It feels nice going onto my skin for sure, but that's about it. It does leave my skin with a smoother canvas, but personally, I don't find that this makes too big of a difference. I would much prefer to use like my Smashbox primerizer. I don't notice this to be especially blurring. In my personal opinion, this is not my favorite product from her, but I don't think it's bad. I like it enough, of course, to keep it in my collection and keep using it. It does have a pretty strong fragrance to it, so if you're not a fragrance fan, you might want to stay away from this. I have sensitive skin, so I probably should stay away from this. But that being said, my mom loves this primer. She's repurchased it. She's run through it. She swears this makes her makeup last longer and look better. I personally have not had that experience. So just know, just because I don't like it, my mom likes it, some people see the value in it. So I'm going to take a little bit of her concealer just to run on my blemishes really quick. This is her Skin Fetish.
Fetish Sublime Perfection Concealer. I wear the shade LM9, which is light medium, and you guys, this is one of my favorite concealers literally ever. I think it's one of the best. You get a lot of coverage with it. It doesn't really crease. It's just an amazing, flawless, full coverage, lightweight concealer. It is probably my favorite concealer of the moment. Like, she hit it out of the park with this particular release, so I too highly recommend this concealer. This is one of her best complexion products that she's come out with. So I'm just starting off by using this to cover my blemishes. This isn't my skin color, so that's why I'm putting it underneath my foundation first just to work as extra coverage because, because we're gonna move on to the foundation, which is the Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Foundation. I also use Light Medium 9, and this is a controversial foundation because it's like $70, and a lot of people did not like this foundation and didn't think it was worth it. I've gotta be honest, I really do enjoy this foundation. I think it's very lightweight, it's very, very natural on the skin. You'll see it's a very liquidy concealer, but I just love it because it feels like there is nothing on my skin. I feel like I'm putting water on my skin. I think the reason why so many people don't like it is because you don't get much coverage with it. I would say this is a light to medium coverage. You can build it up to medium or you can get a really light everyday coverage with it, but I mean, I personally like it. I think it's a really great everyday foundation. I don't wear this when I want to have full coverage or like a full beat. I do like it for every day. I just think it looks so natural on the skin. It wears really well on my skin and I don't feel it on my skin, which I really like. But I think where a lot of people are coming from is they're like, this is a $70 foundation and it just, you know, there's not much coverage to it. It doesn't look special from any other foundation. So I feel like you either love this foundation or you hate it. For me personally, I really like this foundation. I think it's really good. I think it's worth the money if you like light to medium coverage. If you don't, I mean $70 is a lot if you don't like light coverage. But for every day, this is an ideal foundation for me because I don't care for too much coverage. Normally, if I'm not behind the camera, I don't need much coverage for my everyday kind of look. This isn't by any means my favorite foundation in my collection, but I am one of those people that really does enjoy the foundation and the finish and it just makes my skin look nice and juicy and healthy healthy. Moving back to the concealer for the under eyes. Oh, this magical concealer. I need to put this all over my face and see how it does because this concealer is that beautiful. I cannot shut up about this concealer. Literally just the best. Do you see how much coverage I got? I thought the contrast between the concealer and the foundation was interesting though because this concealer is pretty dang full coverage. So I almost don't like wearing this concealer with the foundation. Now people kind of have opposite perspectives on this. If you wear a lighter coverage foundation, maybe use a heavier coverage concealer to kind of counteract that. For me, I just find it looks odd, especially as the day goes on and your makeup kind of wears away. I just think it looks better. If you're going to go for a light coverage foundation, you might as well go for a light coverage concealer as well. So I don't necessarily enjoy pairing these two together because I do feel like I have to go over some parts of my skin with the concealer just to make everything look more consistent. For me, I would probably pair this foundation with the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Concealer. That one is much more lightweight on the skin. But dang, do you see how freaking amazing this concealer is? Now we're gonna move on to a product that I might love even more, and that is the Blurring Under Eye Powder. This is also fairly new, just like the concealer. I have mine in the shade Light, y'all. This powder is my absolute favorite under eye powder ever. It is so blurring, it is so finely milled, and it really just makes your under eyes look amazing. I've been pairing this with all of my concealers lately. I'm considering getting the medium one just so that I can use it all over my face because I feel like that's going to blur my skin and just sit fantastic on foundation. So I kind of use it to set my entire T-zone because it's so perfecting and so blurring. Also, one thing that is not worth it from Pat McGrath at all is her brushes. I'm using my own personal brushes. I've never purchased her brushes, but I've seen them, I felt them. They are not worth the money whatsoever. They're just synthetic makeup brushes that you can get from like Morphe or all of these other brands. So I don't like her brushes. I think they're one of those items that again are a complete ripoff. Next up, I have the Sublime Perfecting Setting Powder. I'm not really moved by this one either. I use it because 
because I have it, but I don't see myself repurchasing this. So this is another product that I wouldn't go as far to say as I don't like this. From her line, it doesn't impress me. It's just a setting powder. I don't notice it to be particularly blurring or anything. It's a powder that's just kind of there. Just kind of sets your makeup, doesn't really add coverage. So for a lot of people, her base products are kind of hit or miss. Either you love it or you hate it. Personally, I don't think everything in her line is great, but I do love her foundation, her concealer, and her under eye setting powder. Everything else I can kind of do without as far as the base, but I'm gonna zoom back into my eyes and we're gonna finish the rest of what we got going on so that I can have a complete eye. So we're gonna pull this baby back out. I'm gonna actually just mix the chocolate brown and the black together so that the black isn't so harsh, but I still want my lower lash line to be basically black. So run it along your lower lash line and mixing it with that brown is going to soften it. So I'm gonna take this shade right here and we're gonna apply that to the inner half of my lower lash line to kind of aid the fact that this really only works with a finger I'm just gonna wet my brush and we're gonna pat that all along the inner part of the lower lash line like so I want every little bit of that black to be covered by the shimmer shades that's where Pat McGrath shines I'm gonna show it off I'm just wiping that brush off and then I'm going into this shade right here and again pat 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 right along the black make sure you blend them and then i'm gonna take just a touch of the black and kind of smudge it down here to make everything look more smoky i don't own a black eyeliner pencil from pat mcgrath though she does have one i haven't tried it i ordered one but it's on the way so i'm just gonna pop a random black eyeliner down here and her mascara, this is the Fetish Eyes Mascara. This is another product where you either hate it or you love it. I'm one of those people that love this mascara. It is one of my absolute favorites. I love how the mascara builds on itself and how voluminous my lashes become. I love this mascara. I think it is awesome. So I'm gonna quickly put these on my lashes. <gasps> oh my gosh. So a major mistake just happened so I need to wait for this to dry so I'm gonna look really dumb for a second but I do want to talk about her liquid liner really quick this is the perma precision liquid eyeliner and I do really like the formula of this it's very black it's matte I really like this when it works so the problem that I have with this it dried out really really quickly I just have it here to show you guys I just ordered a new one because I do really enjoy the formula but if you don't have the money to be constantly spending on a liquid liner over and over repurchasing it run far away from this because it's super annoying how quickly I find this dries out but when it's new and pristine it is an amazing formula. So I'm going to get this all put on some falsies and bronzer and blush because Pat McGrath doesn't have that and I will be back. Welcome back to the face. I use my Charlotte Tilbury Filmstar Bronze and Glow for bronzer and then my Kylie Cosmetics blush in Kitten Baby which is just a really soft color. So we're going to talk about highlight. I only have two kind of highlighters from Pat McGrath. She has like this cream stick. I personally never tried it but I'm going to use the sublime skin highlighter highlighter palette and I think I'm gonna upset a lot of people with what I'm about to say I'm not crazy about this highlighter palette so there's three colors in here and you have a pink based a gold based and this really bronzy gold based color I feel like for Pat McGrath she should have a larger highlighter collection right now but this just isn't for me I don't care too much for the colors the formula is like a putty formula by the way I'm gonna use this pinky based color and this palette like it works fine the formula is really nice I really like using this highlighter that's pink with a look like this but I feel like she's missing a champagne color in this palette and these aren't really colors that to be honest I really like I feel like it's not as reflective it doesn't bring your cheekbone out it just is kind of a splash of color on your cheek but don't get me wrong the formula I don't know if you can see this lays really pretty on the skin but it doesn't really do what a highlighter technically should do for me. I will admit though, I think this is just better catered towards medium skin tones. This gold is really nice. It's a unique gold that's going to look on everybody from pale to super deep. The formula is good. I just don't like the colors that she went with, but I do think if you have a deep skin tone, this is like stunning for you. So on my pale little face, I don't really care for it. Like right now I want to go in with something a little bit more blinding. For me, this isn't worth it, but I can definitely see why other people would like it. I just don't think it looks that good on me and it's not the kind of colors that I go for. I also have this Chroma Lux highlight cream. I got the light pinky one and she also has an icy blue one online. I have not used this since the day that I reviewed it. It's 
a fine formula, but I am never, ever, ever gonna use this. For me, this was a huge waste of money. It comes in this dumb, cheap little paint thing. And look, it's really pretty. Like, it's actually more gold than pink. I'm not really about to put that on my face. So it is gorgeous, but what I would use this for more likely is my eyelid. But I've had this for months and I haven't bothered to do that. So for me, this was a big old waste of money. I don't think the formula is bad by any means, but again, like, what am I gonna do with that? That's just, I don't really like it, so. I definitely feel like though, Pat McGrath doing what she does and being who she is, she should have more highlighters in her line by now. Move on to lips now. She has some of the best lip products in the industry. She also has some really bad products as well. So the first one that I want to talk about is her lip fetish lip balm. This is the biggest waste of money. So I got this one from her Star Wars collection. It's just the clear lip balm and these are so expensive. They're like 30 something dollars and it's just a generic lip balm formula that you can get from CVS. Truly, if you're looking for a good actually moisturizing lip balm, I would get it from Laneige or Tatcha. Those two are the best. This is just you can buy this for $3. It's not exceptional. I mean, it does moisturize the lips, I guess, but it's not worth it. I got it because it was in cute Star Wars packaging. So She came out with a lot of lip balms in her Star Wars collection randomly. These are her astral lip balms. So it's still her lip balms with just a little bit of sheen. And these are an even bigger waste of money. So I have a gold one and a pink one. And you can't... I don't know. Very, very subtle glitter. I don't know why I bought these, truly. These are the biggest waste in money. I spent like over $100 for the packaging solely and it's just, don't waste your money. Lip liners, on the other hand, she has some bomb.com lip liners, some of the best in the business. My two favorites are Done Undone and Contour. Done Undone is my favorite everyday pinky nude lip liner. It's basically the color of my lips. And then Contour is if I really want to either shape the lips or I'm going for a more brown based lip liner. These are awesome because they are really, really creamy with application, but then they set down and they last forever. They are expensive, but truly they're one of the best lip liners on the market that I've personally experienced as far as wear time and ease of application. So highly recommend her lip liner. Like I said, contour and done on done are my favorite. What kind of lip do I want to go for? So I think I want to go with like a pinky nude that's a little too peach. For my lips, I'm going to use Done Undone today because I want to go for a more pinky lip. As far as her lipsticks go, there are some formulas that I like better than others. The matte trance is okay. It's her matte formula and they're kind of that powder matte finish and I don't really find them to be anything exceptional because her lipsticks are very pricey and so I would go for her Luxe Trance formula which is a little bit more moisturizing, a little bit more shiny as you can just see from the bullet compared to the matte trance but just for the sake of color today I am going to go for soft core which is just like this very simple powder pink lipstick but yeah I'm not a crazy fan of her matte trance formula I'm taken by her packaging more than anything you know her lipsticks are expensive so I would go for luxe trance not matte trance she also has an interesting formula which are called blitz trance and these are really cool they're such a unique very pretty glittery metallic lipstick I'm gonna use nude romantique right on top just so you can kind of see these are one of my favorite glitter lipstick formulas. I just think they do such a good job of not being metallic, but not being gritty also because of the glitters. It's the perfect in between and they're still wearable. So Rose Romantique is a really great everyday color if you want to try these Blitz Trance formulas out. So I do think her Blitz Trance are worth it. And then I'm gonna finish with a lip gloss and her lip glosses are one of my favorite formulas. I find that they really smooth out the lips. They really go over lines and they're super comfortable. They're not too sticky. They last a long time and they're super shiny. So all of her lip glosses across the board, I absolutely love. So I'm gonna use Pale Fire Nectar. I got this in a little set and it's just a really pretty glittery pink. She has flat ones as well that aren't going to be glittery, but this look is so glittery, how could I not? So I'm gonna put on that some earrings and all of that good stuff and I will be back for the outro. All right, and here's the look. We created this really beautiful purple and blue smoky glittery eye. I am obsessed with it. I think it is stunning. Only Pat McGrath can do a look like this. I thought this video was really fun because you guys know Pat McGrath is my favorite brand and I'm really only positive about her brand. However, she can do things wrong. So I do think it was fun to talk about the products that 
personally, I don't think are worth it. That I don't think are really worth the price tag. There are great things in her brand that are amongst my favorite out of my entire collection, but there are some that I'm just like, no, not good, not worth it. So hopefully this video helped you out a lot. And the best thing about this collab is that during this quarantine, you guys have a lot of great content to watch. So make sure you check out all of their videos. You get to see a different look with different palettes. You get to see everybody's different makeup styles and their opinions of what is worth it and what is not from Pat McGrath. So I'm very excited to be a part of this collab. I think it was so fun and I'm so excited that we get to bring you guys so much Pat McGrath content today. I love talking Pat McGrath. So that is all I have for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful. If you aren't subscribed to my channel yet, I hope you guys take the time to do so and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys. Have a good one.